Brandon Phillips here, and it's the BKBK podcast, where sports and the culture collide, and the New York Jets reign supreme. I'm your host, like I said, Brandon Phillips, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Brian Taylor, Kerry Taylor, and Captain Kyle McKenna. We're going to jump to things very quickly today, all right, because we're all grown men, we're all fathers, we're all married men, and we don't have much time to get things done, all right? <laughs> um, listen, in this episode, it's titled, It's the Bye Week. Time to make judgments. And yeah, I said it. We're going to make judgments. Wait, 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 wait. Judgments or adjustments? Which which one was it? We're going to make judgments and therefore declaring that we need to make adjustments. We're going to be really (laughs) judgy. Right. People are like, no, no, don't judge. Don't judge. (laughs) That's 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 that the the current generation word. You're so judgy. Why? Because we're telling you, we're getting you, giving you. A constructive criticism and how to be better yes we're judging you we're judging you. we're exactly. we're not going to be subjective we're going to be objective <laughs> right extremely right. objective right. right look at this wow look at the bk bk uh host we we are uh, uh objective and we don't you know we we don't do the nonsense we're yeah. not subjective you know criticize we do well, it from an objective uh standpoint you know what some, I'm saying? some of us got a reputation for being heavy worded that's just, that was like, hey, that was like two seasons ago when Kyle is still holding on. Still to holding that. on, that's, man. Grudges. That's going, right. that's going back to uh, Summit uh, 69. or was, Summit, was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Brandon Cruz. We love you, man. He helped us get uh, get started. So that's a fantastic thing. Um, yeah, man. If you guys ever need anything done, cooking shows or anything like that, you go to Summit 69 in Brooklyn. Red Hook. There we go. Look it up online. Anyway, so guys. This episode is titled, you know, it's it's bye week. It's time to make judgments, and yes, we're going to be making some deliberate and borderline harsh ju- judgments. And we're also going to be, you know, most probably singing some praises to things that are due to be or to have praises sung. So let's just get into it. Mm. Let's just evaluate and judge what we've seen in the first five games of the season. All righty, and I have here in our in our um, outline that I produced here. We're going to go offense, defense, special teams, and we're going to go with coaching, all right? Mm. And it's going to be 30 minutes going right into this because I wanted us to have enough time to really, what do we do, Brian? Unpack everything. So yep. that's a word that Brian teases me about, and I love that, that word. <laughs> love it. Love unpack it, it all, <laughs> all right? And let's start with the obvious. Let's start with the offense, okay? If you guys don't mind, let me just start this one off first. I'm not I happy. mind. I mind actually, but yeah, I'll let you go anyway. Hurry up and wait. How about that? <laughs> Hurry up and wait. I'm not. I'm. I'm not happy with the offense for a multitude of reasons. One, I think that the play calling has not been good. I think that uh, Lafleur is not doing. He's doing an unspectacular job of being the offensive coordinator. Now. Just to give him a little bit of grace here, I wonder if the 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 passing coordinator who passed on, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Coach Knapp, um, I'm sure that that has to had to have affected things in the chemistry of the team and also Zach Wilson's growth. But they also hired Matt Cavanaugh to come in. He's been there for at least a month now, even more. But I still haven't seen the growth from Zach, even with Matt Cavanaugh there. And basically Zach has had one pretty good game and then all the rest has just not been that good. Um, I still have the utmost faith in him because I see, I see the talent there, but he's not being guided in a way that allows his talent to flourish. I'll let you guys hop in there. Well, I mean, I, you go ahead, Brian. Yeah. So listen, I think it sums it up. We have four offensive touchdowns. On the season. None of which are in the first quarter. So, yeah, getting off to poor starts. We only have four total touchdowns. Um, it's just not a way to be. Offensive line has started to come on a little bit. Um, AVT has been phenomenal, um, you know, as, as far as rookie play. But at the end of the day, we just don't have enough scoring in order to be a professional NFL team at this point. So we really need to, after the bye, Uh, or during the bye, kind of make those adjustments necessary to get off to a strong start. Um, We were close in Atlanta, uh, but our defense, you know, didn't keep us in the game, which we'll ultimately get to. But 
you know, listen, Zach has been inconsistent to say the least. Um, we've had no running game, so to speak of. Uh, we can't sustain drives. And so it's really put our defense behind the eight ball and put a lot of pressure on them uh, because we're just not scoring enough points. So, um, you know, we, we really need to fix that going forward. Yeah, I think that you both bring up a lot of good points about um, the unspectacularness of Zach Wilson so far. I, I don't know if my expectations were that he would be this spectacular inside of four games, five games. Um, so I'm not I'm not completely down on him and his maturation process as far as the league is concerned. You got to get reps. You got to see things and. You got to build upon the things that you see. So, but I would agree that he's had one good game. Um, the other games have been, uh, you know, a little bit pedestrian. I think um, w- one of the things that I've been surprised at is that he's been inaccurate and inaccurate at some of the shorter throws. So mm-hmm. that that's where like some of the routine plays. And there was a, a st- stat out there that he's like one of the top quarterbacks in completions, twenty plus yards down the field. And I'll kind of look that up. Um, but the routine and mundane, he's been inaccurate. Where he's ranked second in, amongst the uh, tw- plus twenty yard throws. Yeah, which which is great. But I mean, you know, again, some of those we've been trying to come back in games as well. Um, mm-hmm. but I'll, I'll give him props on that. But it's the routine and the mundane where if you led the receiver on some of these, then they'd be able to run after the catch. He's just not putting it where he's the throwing receivers, behind receivers. throwing behind receivers and stuff like that. And those are the short passes that could lead to long passes or give the receiver the opportunity to really break a tackle and kind of move forward with the, you know, with the run afterwards. So those are the things I'm kind of surprised at because he was really, really accurate at BYU, putting the ball where, again, the the wide receiver could run with it. I think though that's called throwing people open. And that's the difference between good quarterbacks and great quarterbacks or average quarterbacks to good quarterbacks. And people like Aaron Rodgers, who people – sometimes compare him to in his skill set. He's around the same height, 6'2", um, got a great arm, kind of like Aaron Rodgers, and has a nice dynamic flick on the ball as well. Sometimes when you see him throw, you're like, man, that ball looks pretty. He looks pretty throwing that ball. But so does Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Rodgers really knows how to throw people open. And that right there is going to come with, you know, more practice, more reps, and just, you know, not having a rookie mindset. And uh, sometimes you kind of have to go through that. So I still believe in this guy. Yeah. But um, hopefully he can learn that still sooner rather than later. I, I disagree Aaron, with you, Brandon, but I'm going to get, I'm going to touch on that after um, uh, Coach Kite says, uh, makes his points. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers never had a game five starting as a rookie. That never happened. He right. sat on the bench mm-hmm. and watched Brett Favre play. Mm-hmm. Um, Pat Mahomes never had a game five starting as a rookie. So, I mean, we look at these guys that are, that are you know, of the top level in the NFL right now, um, and they're not having to deal with the things necessarily that Zach Wilson is dealing with now. And if you look at somebody like Dak Prescott, that might be a better comparison. Like, what did Dak Prescott look like at the end of five games of rookie year? Or Peyton Manning. Um, they did it know, with those- Josh Allen. It was that comparison that was out there. Brian, I was just about to say that just to piggyback off of what you're saying, Kyle, sorry to step on you. Mm-hmm. The first five games of Josh Allen's rookie season, his numbers are comparable with Zach Wilson's first five games of his rookie season as well. And we see how great Josh Allen is last year and this year um, as well. So I'll, I was I'll thinking back- about Josh Allen the other day, too, not to get off on a tangent, but. You know, you think about the choices that we've made as a franchise, that the Jets have made as a franchise, you know, um, with choosing Sam Darnold over Josh Allen, because Josh Allen could have been our quarterback. Um, and, you know, the trajectories of those two franchises, whereas one is sitting atop the division and looking like a Super Bowl contender, and we're on quarterback number two since that point. Um, so, you know, I, I think that is that, that is a great comparison josh allen because he was thrown right into the fire um but i think that that there are times where the receivers haven't helped out uh, yeah. zach wilson and yep. drop drop balls and i think that when you're looking at you know, how you're going to turn the corner as an offense the the accuracy point that you guys bring up is one part of it if you if you 
get 25% better at that, um, or not even 25, let's say it's, it's a, a 4 or 5% better um, in completion percentage, and then you, you drop that drop percentage down, all of a sudden, it's a big shift. It's a big paradigm shift in, in production. So, and that's what you kind of saw in the Titans game. So I, I don't think we're that far away from it, but you got to have days in which the offense um, can be relied upon to sustain a drive score points and keep the defense off the field. So that's what I was going to say, Kerry. What, what was your point that you were going to make? So several points. So here's the deal. Um, with regard to the offense, the offense is, I would give the offense a D plus. And the issue is that everybody should take a hit. The offensive coordinator, the quarterback, um, the offensive line, um, and uh, at times, the running backs. Uh, when I when we when we talk about uh, the quarterback, we talk about Zach Wilson. Yeah, he has not he has not had the reps that uh, some of the other quarterbacks that you mentioned had in terms of uh, being thrown in the fire. He hasn't had the uh, benefit of having an a seasoned offensive coordinator that has um, been a veteran in calling and play calling. Thirty four years old, right? So, you know, that's that's where we we have to give him a little bit of leeway. But in 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 with with regard to his mistakes are in terms of what he has control over is he has control over accuracy. He is he is not being accurate. He's not accurate at all at times on the routine play. Right. I see at least 30 percent of his balls on a routine play being overthrown, underthrown or not even getting there, not even getting within five yards of the receiver. Right. Um, those are the things that he can correct. He's he has uh, actually addressed that in a couple of interviews and in saying that's what he's going to use the bye week in doing. He's aiming his throws. If anybody that 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 is watching any kind of football can tell that those routine plays where he where he's throwing it to the underneath route or he's throwing it to a um, running back. a receiver out of the backfield or a screen. He is he is he is horribly underthrowing them. Right. Um. He has he has underthrown. Uh, who was the, uh, the our number one uh, wide receiver? Davis. One. Davis, um, a considerable amount of times behind him. Now he's supposed to make those plays. You're getting paid and wide receiver one money. You're supposed to make those plays, right? Um, but you but as your quarterback, he's supposed to make them a little bit easier to do uh, uh, in terms of a catch and catch and run, pitch and catch type type scenario. Um, but he, there have been a lot of drop balls. Seven, actually, within a, a the lot of a games. lot of dropped routine balls, right? Um, the other part of that is you're not spreading the ball en- around enough. You're mm-hmm. not using Elijah Moore enough um, as Carter, an off- I, as an offensive co- um, coordinator. You're not using Michael Carter enough out of the backfield, um, which is which is what where he was you know, a strength of his that he was touted for. Um, Let's get Mims in there. And Let's, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to make the arg- I'm not going to make the argument yeah. for Mims. I'm not going to make the argument for Mims. I'm I'm going to make the yeah. argument for other receivers that are available, right? Um, that you're not throwing to because you're focused solely on your wide receiver number one. And I, and I understand you have a you have a a a a, a relationship with, with Corey Davis. You feel a, a sense of security with him, but there are other guys that are open on the field that are wide open on the field. And you and you have to, as an offensive coordinator, you have to make it uh, a point to uh, a, a point of, of of stress that these are the, the other individuals that are going to help you in, in progressing, making that boring throw, as uh, as Coach Sala says, right? But let's not. But again, let's also not forget, as I as I mentioned, how poorly the offensive line was playing in in pass in pass protection yep. towards the beginning of the season. I mean, they have started to gel. As as far as pass protection, I mean they're not there where where, we, where they need to be as far as run run protection, um, but you, we we feel that we're going to get better once the return of Makai Beckton happens, and then we move. I don't know. I mean, you know, Kerry, I, I I read that article. I think either you or Brian sent, and they're talking about how the offensive line is starting to gel. I'm, no, no, I, I'm saying it's yeah. getting better than it was from the beginning. Again. This is a line that uh, that didn't. I mean, they're, they're not always. They're not all on the same page, um, in terms of playing together, right? 
So, you know, you, well, you, you, you well know an offensive line needs time to gel in terms of making, making the calls, in terms of yeah. identifying defenses, in terms of identifying rushes. Um, yes. You know, so that, that's going to take, li- take a little bit of time. I mean, Elijah Vera Tucker was they, terrible they, in, the first, in the first game he played in. They were. Right? I'm, but, talking but, about, I'm talking about our, our number one, one of our, you know, our first round pick. Now, yes, you know, look at him. The, the last he was the number ranked, number one games. ranked, right? Number one ranked offensive lineman. Yes, from the entire so, NFL. So it's going to take that part is going to going to take some time. But you know, but but I reiterate, it's not all on Zach Wilson. No. I think this is it's, it's, no. it's, it's a percentage. It's a percentage, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, but I think everybody so. receives a D plus at this point. Yeah, There's, yeah. I, I told I, I'm I'm with you on that. My 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 point that I was trying to interject on was basically like. The past two games, all right, AVT started off not good. Another rookie, right? right. Zach Wilson's a rookie. Sure. Starting off not that great. AVT, rookie, starting off not that great. I'm seeing more growth in AVT now, you know, especially the last two games. In the mm-hmm. last one, he was rated as the top guard, right, right, Brian? I, I in the entire NFL, yeah. Or in offensive entire- lineman. I think it was offensive lineman in the entire NFL. There we go. You, you got to love that. So, but my thing is, it takes more than just one. I've actually been. It takes more than just one what? O linemen because it because oh yeah you. absolutely but but but, yeah. but but when you have two offensive linemen that are ranked in the top ten at their position out of out of the five that are there then you should be able to do some things right well right. unless you got the yeah. guard yeah. Van Roten right but Gary but <laughs> right Gary, here's oh, wow. my point hold on hold on here's my point because they have the second the, the second player who's ranked top, ranked top ten as McGovern yeah right yeah and I don't believe that I don't believe that he is I don't okay. care what P- I, I don't care what pro football focus says. Okay. Because I watch this man myself. I do not believe those numbers that they're putting out for him. Again, you're not watching. What what they're doing is they're watching every snap of an individual and evaluating them on every snap. We can't tell what McGovern is doing on every snap. Now, I can, t- I can tell you that I've seen him blindly miss a block. Yes, you're absolutely right. I have, I have been just as, as much of a, of, a, of a critic of, uh, not, not criticism, but, but, but description of 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 what uh, McGovern has done it's more so than more so than Van Roten Van Rotten whatever we want to call him. <laughs> um but what I've seen I is what it. I've seen is improvement right I, you, and you got to you got to recognize that and again he no, is your quarterback <laughs> okay I, look look I'm I'm not about feeling I'm about what actually is there and I and the stats tell you what's what's there well well also okay, let's say this not, you yeah. but you get they started off with seven sacks in the first game of course you're going to improve yeah, <laughs> right. I right. mean, you you have to improve, right? If you're gonna give up seven sacks, nowhere to go but up. No, right. nowhere to go but up. When you're laying on the floor, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I, so, listen, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. McGovern get blown up at the line of scrimmage on run plays on like third and one. Yeah, man. And, but and, that's and not all. Just, that's and, not all. We're just sitting here, and, and we're just sitting here talking about pass protection, but offensive linemen they pass protect and they run block. And I've seen McGovern get blown up. So what I'm yes, saying is, right. he yes. is improving. Yes, I've been surprised and happily surprised about our two tackles. Uh, 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 um, yeah, uh, Fenton, uh, Moses and, and Morgan Moses, you know what I mean? Because they've been playing pretty well all season, you know what I'm saying? No, but not, but not Fenton, all season, pretty well. I said, not perfect, but pretty well. They, I don't think that either one of those tackles have played terrible. They played some good fronts, they've, too. You know, the Carolina front was really good, the Denver front is really good. Um, Patriots, even though uh, Chubb didn't play in the Denver game, right. 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 Um, the Patriots. I'll put it to you this way: McGovern and Van Roten. At the end of the season, they can both go. Gone. Well, I don't. Gone I don't think is is McGovern signed for one more year. Um, I, I think, think he is. It's, it's a three year deal. I think we can release him after this without any uh, right. put on the cap. Yeah, I mean, it, if, it will. If it, will of, if, it will depend. It will depend on what they do in free agent. Not not free agency. They're not signing another free agent. Free agent center. I'm telling you right now. They're going if to, any they're one going of us to, had gotten our way, one. if we had gotten our way, we all would have drafted a center. I mean, it was on all our mocks. Oh, yeah, we absolutely. Were all, we were all looking at that. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, um, Creed my, Humphrey. My son is playing yeah. in Kansas City. Yeah, Creed right. Humphrey is, right. a, you know what I'm saying? Well, he's he's the top-rated, one of the top-rated centers in the league. So I think we're all right All of there. us wanted Creed Humphrey. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Was there's, a lot of, there, there's a lot of centers playing in the league right now that one of us has, or all of us has had our eyes on over the last two drafts. So, I mean, that we'll probably get somebody this year as a, an heir apparent kind of thing. But I wonder, 
as Jets fans, we are spoiled because we went from Mawai to Nick Mangold, and then now we're in like center purgatory. And we're not I, used to that. I, 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 I resent and refuse to ever put the word spoiled and Jets fan. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, why exactly. did you even go there? That's, yeah. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. I, I, you know what? That's, yeah. that's like saying I'm spoiled because nobody's dinged my car when I park it in New York City. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because it's um, going to happen the next time you park. Correct. Yeah. But the uh, I, I think that, you know, when we talk about the Zach Wilson inaccuracies and, and the O-line, I think that the one of the biggest disappointments in the offense is the underachieving of the wide receiver room where you know when you look at there's a, we have three guys that are legitimate trade bait in our wide receiver room right now because of what other people think their potential is and not what they're doing on the field you know and that's keenan cole mims and jameson crowder um so i, I think that elijah moore has disappointed thus far as far as what our expectations were for him. Um, and maybe that's what Kerry says. It's a usage thing. You know, yes. like maybe they should be doing something more to use them. They did some jet sweep stuff um, in the Titans game. Um, but I think that, you know, he, he has at least four drops um, in, 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 in stuff like that. And, and I think that'll come. I'm not. Does you know, he like, have four legit drops? I mean, he's I only think, played in three games. I think he had. I think he had two in the first game. And at least one more. So maybe we'll call it three. Um, but if we're talking about seven drops total, is what Brian said before, um, he he's contributing to like you know almost fifty percent of those drops. Um, so, but I but I have a lot of faith in him. I think that he's going to be the electrifying guy that we thought. I mean, the guy had the, he averaged over ten catches a game at Ole Miss. Um, so his his pedigree is there. But I think that. Ball. Yeah, say again, get say again Brandon. I was just saying, you know, that we just have to get him the ball, and that's part of the play calling in the in the offensive coordinator yeah. and the passing coordinator's job. As far as Matt Cavanaugh, as far as uh, Lafleur, um, you know, yes, he has to uh, catch was, it when he, you throw it to him. Yeah, he was the darling of training camp, wasn't he? Like all the press clippings you you, you heard and saw were just like how this guy's going to be rookie of the year and this and that offensive rookie of the year. He was the darling of 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 the preseason. But then, then did, now, but didn't play, play in one preseason game. That's true, but in camp and in scrimmages, mm -hmm. you just heard like a ton of stuff about him, a ton, a ton of positivities. But now it's like you know, give the guy a chance to to make some plays happen. Okay, he's had some drops or whatever, but get him a quick screen, get him a quick slant, and let him explode or something. Like put a package together or two, you know, for him. You know, he's only he's, been completely oh, healthy for two games. Yeah. The first game and the second game, uh, the third game he gets concussed in the beginning of it, and then he comes back for the game in London, and you know he so he's coming off of an injury. I'm not blaming him yet for for for, for much at all. No. So not so my my question to all you guys is if you're going to make a a trade deadline move, um, do you trade Cole? Do you trade Crowder? Or do you trade Mims? I don't trade well, any of them. To be honest with you, I just feel like. You need as many weapons in that wide receiver room as possible. Um, and we've already been uh, subject to the injuries. So that's exactly why you leave the wide receiver group where it should be right now. But would I trade for an OJ Howard potentially? Right. And I bring in more. Plug, plug right. him in there totally. uh, in the tight end room and see if we can try to uh, take care, you know, take um, advantage of that weapon. Sure, I'd do that. But I'm not subtracting from the weapons that my rookie uh, quarterback has. I'm trying to add to it. So you'd rather you'd rather trade an asset for OJ Howard than you would uh, a, a draft asset rather than a, a player asset. Well, I would trade um our um our safety. You know, May. I would trade May and um, get back OJ Howard in like a fifth. I would love that deal, and I'd do that all day and week. Do they have a need at safety? That's they do. That glaring? They do. Very glaring. And, I mean, they, and they don't use O.J. Howard. No, they don't. He's like the third or fourth, you know, tight end right now. But he looked good in the last game. And I just think he's, he's behind Gronk. He's not going to start over Gronk, right? So now it's not about They still have Howard. Cameron Brait. Too. They have Brait, right. too, as yeah. well. So yeah. there's just, you know, it's just a backlog of, of tight ends there. So they have a glut in that area. And right now we're not going to pay May 
at the end of the day, and he's had some legal troubles recently as well. Um, and he, he used to be a captain, is no longer, right? So there's some things there that would lead to us being a young team. Our timeline is not the same with May, and I wanted to keep him, to be honest with you. But if, it, if there's an opportunity to add a weapon, especially down the seam, um, that's big, fast, runs like Gazelle, uh, was Brandon's number one guy um, that draft. I mean, why not do that? I want to keep Brandon love, happy too. Love uh, Brand, Brandon was thinking about taking him with the first pick. I was. Yeah, yeah. He, he was. And was. that didn't work out too well. But you know, and, no, and, and, and you know what else? It he wouldn't have aged like, well either. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Bad cheese. Well, speaking of not aging well, I believe um, uh, uh, our safety uh, will be 29 next year as well. So. I'm willing to trade them. Yeah. I mean, look, we have some success but, in trading safeties. So mm-hmm. well, I think if, if you're going to, if, if you're going to go the, the, what do we get for Marcus May route? Um, I want more I think, than fifth in OJ though. I, I think that there's other teams that would be interested in him other than Tampa Bay. But what do the Rams have at tight end right now? Everett. Uh, is it, uh, I, mean, no, uh, I forget his name. They have a pretty good tight end. I had a conversation with a kid at a football game on Friday night here in Washington, and he had the a fresh uh, Matthew Stafford Rams jersey on, um, like total official, you know, with the with that rubbery number that the Rams have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I was kicking it with him for a second, talking, and he goes, "I told him I was a Jet fan," and he goes, "Yeah, you're gonna trade us Marcus May? What's up with that?" <laughs> wow so i wasn't wow. even thinking about wow. the rams i wasn't even thinking about the rams as a destination until this kid kind of kind of put it in my ear um but it just goes to show you that marcus may like jamal adams was you know the the linebacker that can't cover receivers yeah. um he uh he has value outside of our organization yeah he's on he's on a franchise tender uh, which means that we, we, I mean, we, I would never even think that it's a possibility that we would double franchise him. Tyler um, Higby, sorry to step on you. Tyler Higby is, Higby the, tight is the tight end. And he's, and I think he had a pretty good game today, too. Uh, five catches for 36 yards, you know, for a tight end. You know, that's yeah, not, but if, if he's their starter, I don't think they trade. I don't think they trade. They don't have the depth that, yeah, that Tampa gonna, Bay has. Right, they're not going to be, they're not going to take a, a position of strength. Carry on. I'm sorry to step on you. Go yeah. ahead. Bro. No, but I, I, I think that that that's. I don't know if you guys can think of another team that might be. Well, the Ravens too. I mean, they're out there, and I think they need some secondary help in the in the safety group. But they don't have an abundance like, of tight ends. Though. Again, yeah, I, I don't know if they have the depth. It just makes sense. Tampa Bay's right there. OJ Howard, former first round draft pick, um, speed, size, and is buried in a depth chart. And and a lot of that had to do with injuries. And is, Tom loved is, him uh, last year. Like in, in training camp, he was like, This guy, like, you know, let's let's feed him the ball. And then he got hurt. So is, think, is OJ Howard the same year as Marcus May? Is he coming up on a contract? No. He's no. coming. This is his last year. Yeah, I think it's his last year. This is his last year on the con on the contract that he's on. Well, May so May was the second year, rounder, yeah. you gotta remember. So he comes off he's a it's a four year max versus a five if you're a first rounder. So right. yeah. Yeah, what I about do, defensive? What about defensively? Since we're talking about safety now, um, a lot of talk about uh, on our text thread about Quincy Williams and his play, um, but Gerard Davis coming back and, yeah. and Quincy Quincy Williams not really getting to play a lot. And and to be fair, he's made a lot of splash plays, but there are things about him that are, are sure. underwhelming too. Sure. He gets pushed off at the line at the, the point of attack at times. He's a speed guy. He's not a strength guy. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Which and is, uh, which is good and bad, you know. Right. It's it, it's good and bad, but I mean, like, no one, you know, oh, no one out there is Ray Lewis right now. And if you look at the 49ers scheme and you look at Fred Warner, he's kind of got some good length, but he's not – the biggest kind of guy, but what, what he can do, he's disciplined um, and he's a rangy guy and he makes, and he flies across the field and makes tackles. He's not the thumper 
that uh, you that one would expect. But um, he he reminds me of a slim down Mosley, Fred Warner, and then I'm 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 equating uh, Quincy with that as well. He's only five eleven, two twenty five, but he's playing way bigger than his size, man. And I I I, I love the kid. And okay, maybe he might get uh, pushed at the point of attack, but he's already forced like two fumbles already. Um, and that was in one a game. Demolition it's man, when three. It comes... yeah, it's three because he, three. he did three forced fumbles in the Atlanta game. Yeah, thank you. And and he's also got a couple sacks on him as well. So, you know, I think the one thing that he needs to do is to keep his head up because he loves to make that hit. Mm-hmm. And I saw like a couple plays where if he kept his head up, he could have had a pick six twice. You know, twice in one game. Exactly. Exactly, and that's why I said a couple plays. Right. So Tennessee. if he keeps his head up, that will just he, – he can be a just more balanced and more disruptive um, linebacker, and I don't want to see his snaps go down. I, I, I think Gerard can just kind of, you know, be the the, the, uh, the third man in. I don't I mean, think – If you play a base defense, like what Kerry was saying, you know, a base 4-3, you know – Gerard can play the strong side, and you have Quincy playing the weak, and you have um, Mosley playing the middle. And then when we're playing nickel, it's Mosley and it's and it's and it's Quincy. But didn't they go out and get Gerard Davis? Like they recruited him, right? Like oh, this yeah. is they no, they, they said this is the guy that we think is going to do this for for us. Kind of like the same way with uh, Joiner that they they went out and got him because of scheme fit and and you know evaluation so we haven't even really gotten to see gerard davis yet so i, I think that he has the potential to maybe with cj mosley playing at such a high level you bring gerard davis in and that might that might notch things up a little bit because our front has been really good i mean you're you're gonna you, you get a lot out of sheldon rankins you get a lot out of uh Quinn williams um and you're getting a lot out of Bryce Huff, Franklin you know, who, uh, you know, and, and Jonathan Franklin Myers. I, I, I agree with you, Kerry. It was a great extension uh, to get that guy signed and, and, and put away. He, he's he's going to be he's going to be the other cornerstone when Carl Lawson gets back. Like, I can't imagine how good this defense would have been with a healthy Carl Lawson or how good it will be, you know, and if we. We add another pass rusher, another guy um, next year. That the front seven could be really, really special. But I think one of the biggest surprises of the season is the the back, the defensive backfield, mm. and how good they're playing. Yep. Um, in a lot of ways, especially uh, Bryce Hall. Oh yeah, Bryce Hall has been playing amazing. Um, he is. I think he's earned the title of number one cornerback. Um, I just think the thing that's going to bring him over the top and I'm patient is getting some turnovers, picking the ball off. But, you know, we don't have to rush that because if guys can't complete passes on you, then I'm happy with that. You know, if you can stick to them um, like glue and and you and you play extremely well in this scheme that they have laid out for you, then I'm happy with that. You know, so I love that. I love the fact that we have uh, a first year or or rookie uh, corner in the slot playing at a high level, you know? Michael and Carter the second. Exactly. You know what I mean? He sounds like a president or something, you know? And ja- uh, Javelin Gidry playing pretty well as well. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Echoes, Number four, Echoes on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, on the uh, outside, opposite yeah. wall. You got to yeah. say, we're not missing Blasson Austin at all. No, we are no. not. Everyone was surprised by that late cut, and it, it really – I haven't even seen him play for the no, Seahawks. He has not. Uh, so I don't know if he's a practice squad guy with them right now or not. But I'm gonna take a take a look at that game tonight and see if I can see him play. And guys, uh, and, and and look at this: our corners and slot corners are playing so well. We've had injuries in our safety positions, both uh, uh, free safety and strong safety. We're not necessarily feeling like we're missing out. Because the secondary has been playing so good and the, and the corners have been playing so well that you don't feel like there's a lacking in the safety department. At least I haven't really seen that as much because I think that they're playing so well that they're kind of covering the, the, um, the lack of talent that we have back there. 
Well, you know? I, I think you got a heavy dose of Austin Davis, uh, Ashton Davis, uh, last, last week, week yeah. in London for the first time. And I think that, whereas our corners, you know, there's, there's a lot to be impressed with. Our safety play last week was probably our undoing. Yeah. Of how, did Ash, how did Ashton play? Because honestly, I was working and I did not see that game, any of it. Well, it was a lot of underwhelming receivers having great games. Exactly, Brian. Right. Brian, would you agree on that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would agree. And and um and this is what my issue is with the defense overall is third down. And I think there's a lot of times where we play well on first and second uh -huh. down, and we give up that that third down on penalties. Sometimes, um, sometimes it's not a good call. <laughs> so we we've seen that at least in the last game with Quincy Williams hitting Matt Ryan. I thought that was a terrible call. Um, but you know, there's yes. times where we just can't get off, uh, off the field on third down and getting back to the Quincy Williams thing, his pro football focus score is 44. What? With, yes. 44, 44. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, well, that, that, that's representative of the plays that maybe you don't see, right? You see the big yeah, splash yeah. plays, but do you yeah. see the, the times where he's out of position or, you know, is overrunning a play or some of those other things, maybe you're not seeing from that perspective as well. And we've given up seven rushing touchdowns so far this year um our run defense is not that good a lot of that has to do with the front seven right, right? uh of which he's a part isn't of good at coverage either right so i, I just you know listen I, I think that he's made some good plays forced three fumbles which is great but again there's other plays where maybe he is missing out and um maybe getting gerard davis back and shifting the depth of our linebacking core will give us more opportunity to make plays and get off the field and third down because if we can get some stops in there i mean we only lost by by one score against atlanta it's not like they blew us out uh, although at times it felt like that was the case that's because we couldn't get them off the field so they had time of possession it was crazy we just couldn't get off the field um and i know that we were playing a bend but don't break type of defense you know i, I get that but at some point in time you have to man up and get those get the other team off of the field and turn it back over to the offense. And that's where it's been our undoing. You know, when we really needed the stops, we couldn't get them. And hopefully, you know, after the bye, that's something that we can correct. That's that a tough true? game to watch. At six, I had to get up at 6.30 in the morning to watch that game. <laughs> oh, man. Right. I, you know, I, you I'd be pissed off, man. And, and, I, and, and I, I actually, I, actually I, I just went to sleep on the couch and, uh, and just turned on the TV at 6.30. <laughs> You know, Brian, um, you make good points, but um, I'm also going to put, uh, you know, uh, as far as being run on a lot, not just in the linebackers, but I've looked at the D line and just me, you know, being a lineman, offensive yeah. defense, I tend to look at that stuff in more detail. Those guys, when it comes to runs, they're out of position a lot or just getting zoned out or, or pushed off the ball more than one would expect. Right. I think they play better when they're rushing the passer, and I think they. I don't know if it's a scheme thing where they're just shooting the gaps and then they're just getting pushed aside and the running backs is running right by them right. or what. But, you know, I, I'm noticing that uh, the linemen are kind of getting pushed out of position and allowing, you know, five and six yards a clip at times on certain drives where I'm like, how the heck did they get down the field this fast? Like, what's going on here? Uh, you nope. know, like, don't we have, don't we have Quentin Williams? Don't we have uh, Foley? You know, don't we have, you know, uh, uh, Franklin Myers? Like, what, what's going on here? Yeah. And, you know, um, I, I, I think the linemen need to do a better job. That D lineman coach needs to coach them up better or the scheme that's called for them needs to be something that really fits their talent level and what they do to be able to stop the run. Because there's no way with all those names that I just listed and we have good linemen and a good rotation that we should be run on as much as we can. And you know what? A lot of the runs are happening right up the middle, too. I'm like, what the heck is going on? like in between the tackles. And to me, you can't let that, that happen. Can't, that can't happen. And you know what can't happen is to get burned on like four screens in a row like we did against I can't Tennessee. Stand that. That, that it's, is, like third, it's like third and 18. Yeah, third and 18, and they're getting the first down. And, you know, uh, thankfully we were able to correct that against Atlanta. But, I mean, and Atlanta saw the tape. They're like, all right, we're going to run a couple screens at them. They, know, they can't <laughs> cover that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Especially when you got guys like Quincy Williams coming up aggressively and making plays like oh. that's that's where the screens really hurt a defense is when they're super aggressive and mm -hmm. and uh and they got that great up the field pass rush right i think that may, maybe brandon what you're seeing is that 
we got guys that they they got you know they got the quarterback in their sights you know they're thinking about that 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 sack and uh sometimes that will hurt your defense in the run game yeah that's true you know you got to play your assignments and uh be disciplined in that i totally understand that so let's move on to this should be a fairly quick part of this whole thing i mean for me special teams i love the kicker i don't know if he's missed anything yet you can correct me if i'm wrong missed Emmy an extra Oak. point i think yeah did he uh yeah. Yeah, one, one or two extra points but that's kind of been the the way in the nfl this year like those extra points aren't gimmies anymore so but he's made yeah. the field goals he has been pretty good from distance yeah, i like him and uh when do we get our punter back you know he's a good one brandon man you know uh brayden man i'm sorry and uh I, I happen to like him a lot too um and i think we've 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 seen a couple good returns I think our coverage is pretty good as well. Yeah. So so far, our special teams, you know, I'd give it a thumbs up. Yeah. I would say just Justin Hardy is, if not one of the the one of the best co- the best yeah. cover guy in the NFL right now. Yep. And and that's as advertised. Mm-hmm. Um, every time you see any coverage thing, you're seeing him make a play, and I think you're seeing some of these uh, these young D backs also get in there. Justin Hardy doesn't play any thing other than special teams no that's it he's like a yeah that's it so um that's another thing just to point that out roster wise that's another thing that hurts denzel mims is that you got a guy on special teams that's so good that he's taking a roster he's taking an active roster spot to play special teams and not do anything else um so anytime you have guys that like like mims that would only take a roster spot to play receiver um or a hardy that will only take it to play special teams that limits your capabilities as far as roster movement yeah so i don't, I don't think i'm bring there. it up i don't know what's going on over there because i'm hearing reports that mims is getting frustrated but the thing is here's the question frustrated with with what yourself the team is coaching getting frustrated with you like what's the dynamic over there right now i would love to know what's going on there internally between the Jets coaching staff and Denzel Mims, I, and I just don't know. You know, it sounds like he just doesn't know the playbook to the degree that he needs to in order to be out there consistently. And I think w- where he's competing with other wide receivers in that in that room is that they know the X and the Y, and you know they can play multiple positions, and he could just play the outside guy. Um, and so I think, and I think with that. He, you know, during training camp, he was hurt or, you know, got sick or something like that. So in OTAs or whatever else, it was somewhat behind the eight ball and everybody's learning. Stomach, huh? He got a stomach bug twice. Twice. Yeah. yeah. Lost yeah. a lot of weight. Lost 20 pounds. You look at this dude's fingers. Pounds. He got it on two separate occasions <laughs> and he got it at the Jets compound. So what are they feeding this kid? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. I'm going to go conspiracy theory like you were going with McGovern's PFF. Um grade which i think is kind of funny that you won't accept it <laughs> but anyway i won't accept it no uh, no no that's not right no it's not right um, but I, I will go I, I will go so far as to say i, I think that i, I think reject that, that subscription a, a lot of that um a lot of that like food poisoning um injury stuff with denzel mims i i'll go conspiracy theory and say that was a cover-up for the fact that he didn't know he hasn't ever known his playbook and uh if you don't know your playbook and you're an NFL player, it's not like the Jets playbook is harder than all the other ones. You know, go play arena. Go play arena too, mm-hmm. actually. Um, and then, you know, you can you can get a little some reps at D-back. You get some reps at receiver. You know, you can get a hot dog at halftime. <laughs> if you don't know the playbook, get out of the building. I don't want you. Mm-hmm. you it's, it's absolutely useless. So I'm going to take a hard line stance on that. But I, I, I would go with conspiracy theory and say that they were trying to, to put a good spin on Denzel Mims. And, you know, it's funny because that's always been the knock on Baylor receivers. They're nine route guys. Uh, like uh, Corey, uh, what was the guy that played for the Browns that was from Baylor? Uh, I know who you're talking about, but um, yeah. I don't remember his last name. though. A lot of bus receivers that don't ha- they can't run the route tree. And, you know, I would like Denzel Mims to prove me wrong on this. 
and not be a bust Baylor receiver and be somebody who can contribute. Because I thought that was a steal when we got him in the second round. And it just doesn't look like it right now. And, I mean, maybe maybe he was on the sidelines eating a hot dog like uh, Mark Sanchez was, you know, and got food poisoning from that. <laughs> got to buy it from the right truck, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got you got to see the grade in the front window. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to check that out. Just can't be eating from anybody's yep. truck, bro. You can't get that LIE hot dog, you know, like the one in the truck that's on the side of the LIE. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know why? That's because they're selling the uh, ballpark franks. You got to stay with the sabrettes. You got to stay oh, with the sabrettes. are the best. You want the halal, you know, the, you need to go downtown, man. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, you need the halal. You need to go downtown, bro. You, you got a good sabrettes hot dog that's kosher. Kosher and halal, same thing, man. Yeah. 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 Same thing. Listen, it's good as, long, beef. as long as they snap when you bite them, then you know it's good. I don't like that much. Stuff. <laughs> oh, you go to Nathan. You go to Nathan's in Oceanside with Robert Sala, the dude from Oceanside. <laughs> <laughs> you got a Nathan's in Westbury, too. I'm not a fan of it. It's no longer there. It's Chick-fil-A now. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. I'm, oh, still wait, I, I'm still waiting for Miami subs to come back to Oceanside. I'm waiting for Blimpies to come back. How about that? <laughs> There's a few well, Blimpies out there. You're going to be for a long time, you know, bro. <laughs> Because there, I'm not a fan of Subway. I like Blimpy. I love that oil and vinegar smell. Always did, bro. Always <laughs> did. You're, you're, waiting. Pop, so <laughs> you're waiting for Joe's Deli, doll. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you put the salt and pepper right. on right there, Kerry? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make brownies tonight, and, I, and I'm going to think about the, the brownie with the fruit punch. Oh, yeah. man. Great. And then, and then think about how we used to just with like just four quarters, just oh, playing contra. contra. I knew, I knew that was the next thing you were gonna say. Like, like Brandon, we played a lot of football together, but never was our teamwork on display as much as when you and I played. When you had double machine gun and I had super spreader, yeah, on uh, super contra, <laughs> and and people would just gather around to watch because they yes, knew what was yes. gonna happen every time. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe's <laughs> Deli, man, go bald, and my goodness. I think it turned into like an income tax place. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> shady income tax place. <laughs> All right. So, hey, so just one last thing before we move on to the Knicks, because, you know, we got to talk about the Knicks. Let's talk about the coaching of the Jets overall, first mm -hmm. five games, overall assessment. Um, you know. Can we just and, can we just do grades or, you know, since we kind of talk some of it? Let's do grades. Right. Let's do grades with a brief uh, explanation. Mm. Brief. I'll give, you my, I'll give you my first. Go I told ahead, you. I told you what, what the offense was. I mean, when I talked about uh, what was going on, the play calling is terrible. They get a D plus. I mean, it, it's rookies all around, and um, you know when you're not utilizing uh, the weapons that you have, uh, you're not utilizing play action. Um, you're constantly putting uh, Zach Wilson in positions where he has to uh, make perfect throws. Uh, you're not running the ball as effectively as I believe you should. Uh, I don't. I don't see the resemblance of what the San Francisco offense looked like, and I think that's what you were selling uh, those bill of goods um, when you uh, uh, sold us on our offensive coordinator. And I don't see it. So he gets a D plus for me. The, on the defensive side, uh, I see glimpses of what uh, Sala was uh, for San Francisco. You know, as far as scheming and um, putting together a, a defense that uh, defensive package that can compete in this league. Uh, you know, none of us thought that the uh, secondary, uh, specifically the cornerbacks, would look the way that they have looked. And, you know, our first, um, I guess, third of the season. Mm -hmm. Right. So he gets he gets um, high grades for that. Um the linebacking core, uh, we were hit with injuries early. Um, I think they're doing an adequate job. I mean, you just highlighted uh, Quincy Williams uh, in terms of uh, his performance. I think the, I think the defensive line um, has played well at times, and um, they've uh, you know given up some chunks of yardage uh, uh, to the running game. So overall, I would give the defensive coaching staff a B. Uh, uh, with uh, a look to ascend um, in the next uh, several weeks. So you're saying overall D plus defense B? Yeah. 
I would go. I would go with a C overall, um, and I'm gonna break it up into this these these portions. So as far as offense and defense, I agree with what Terry's saying. As far as the defense, um, I think that you're you're seeing shades of of what a good defense will be. Um, you know, Jeff uh, Ulbrich, um and Salah have have they, they have taken what they have and they've molded it into something that can go out and you know and can compete. Um, I agree with Brandon on the um, and, and and carry on the the offensive stuff where I think that the play calling could be better suited to utilize some of the weapons that we have. But I I really I got to give Sala really good grades in dealing with the New York media and the expectations of things as far as like you know I I think that Gates was terrible with a press conference <laughs> and with roster management. Um, as far as like and, you know, talking and, about players right. and expectations, and um, I didn't think Gates did well in anything. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think <laughs> it's I a think low that, bar. I, I think that um, one of the things that Bowles was good at was staying even, even keel. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 you know, sometimes we complained about that because it was like he didn't ever seem that excited about anything. Um, but at the same time, he he also didn't get upset about anything. Whereas Rex Ryan was like high or low you know one or the other um you know brandon actually deals with rex a lot now and a lot of people love that fire about him a lot of people got tired of it so Salah's, you know dealing with the situation as it is and the expectations i think that maybe you know when you come in with the all gas no breaks type of mentality um and then it's and then the, the next narrative is he has to do the boring things better. I think that's a little bit of a conflict. Um, so they're mm. learning to deal with, you know, what the realities of the situation are as opposed to, you know, selling the brand of it. So I'm not really disappointed with, with the coaching staff right now, but I'm not going to give them good grades because um, we're, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not a highly performing football team. So um, I think a C is a fair assessment. Go ahead, Brian. All right. So, you know, for me, I'll give the offense a D. And I'll give the defense a C. And I think overall, I'll give the coaching staff a C. Uh, I think that Sala and company have a lot to deal with with how many young, experienced players are starting and getting – a lot of minutes on this team. So I'll definitely give them, you know, some grace there. Uh, but I think the offensive game plans have been inadequate, right, which has led us to not starting off um, on the right foot. I feel like, you know, the first 15 plays or whatever need to be scripted. And if they are and this is the result, then what are we doing during the week, you know, as far as practice is concerned? Um, but I do like um, Salah and his ability to be the CEO of this organization. And I think we're, we're really going to see how good of a coach he is um, during, you know, after the bye. Right. Because um, he has to coach his coaches at the end of the day. And so if I'm him, I got to, you know, I put my arm around that offensive coordinator. I'm like, listen, dude, let's, let's go to the side here um, and close the door and be like, listen, <laughs> we, we need to get this right. Right. Um, we need to fix our our quarterback or, or get our quarterback consistently moving forward and improving. And that hasn't happened. It's kind of been, you know, back and forth. And we need this offense scoring points so that we can get some W's on the board and have our young team feeling good, you know, week to week. So um, they've got some work to do. Special teams in A, you know, we haven't mentioned them as far as grade is concerned, but that's the A that kind of curves it to an overall of a C. You know, I, I, I agree with you guys. Um, so I don't need to rehash the offense, defense, and special teams. I'm just going to go overall. Um, and, 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 you know, as far as the coaching, whatever grade I'm going to give to the coaching right now is my overall assessment of the Jets. And I'm going to give them a C. I'm not going to give them, you know, anything more or less than that. And that is because um, I believe C is that, passing. Yes, the C is passing. Mm. Yes. And um, I give them a passing grade. Mm. Um, because I think that the team still has motivation. And I think that motivation is inspired by Salah. 
I think Salah has injected a new set of energy into the team. And um, I'm happy to have him here. And we are one and four, correct? Yeah. One and four. And uh, it's a losing record. It's going to be a lot to try to come back from to even make 500. But I feel like the team is still energized. They're not walking around with this give up attitude. And I think that right there is a reflection of the coach, even though we're not playing well, even though the offense, the, the, the offensive schemes, it, it's not really coming and, and being necessarily fruitful for us. We're not seeing how our first round draft pick, the second round pick, I'm sorry, the number two pick in, in, in the NFL, it's not, he's not performing up to what we were expecting. But I think that overall, because of Salah, there is still hope because there's still that positive energy out there that he injected into the team. At least that's how I'm looking at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, to compare it with the contrasting teams, I don't think the Jaguars are looking at Urban Meyer in that way at all. You know, I think it's like all downhill, and that's even with their win today. Look at him as a joke right now. More negatively than they are positively. I look. I think that they're looking at themselves as having less hope rather than more hope than the Jets are. That's what I'm talking about, and that's why I'm going to give them a C, even though, you know, they really, really need to start improving. Yeah, I think besides the Broncos game, that was the only game that I felt like we were completely out of it. Um, yeah. I think even the Patriots game, again, minus, you know, what transpired with our, our rookie quarterback and the turnovers, we could have been in that game, but it just didn't end up working that way. We lost to the Panthers by five um, in Carolina, and we lost to the Falcons by seven. So both of those were one-score games. I didn't feel that way last year at all. Like, we were in no games <laughs> last year. Yeah. We also lost to Carolina at full strength with Christian McCaffrey. No, um, no, no. No Carl Lawson. No, yeah. no Carl Lawson. You know what I mean? So no, not... I, I... I mean, I mean, they. I mean, Carolina was at. Oh yeah, yeah. Strength. Carolina was at full strength, and, and it was, and it was the first game ever for a rookie quarterback. Yep. So. Yep. I hear you. Uh, so, w- with all that being said, I think we've thoroughly what Brian unpacked. Unpacked it, baby. Yeah. So now let's 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 transition into basketball. I think we're like this right now. Woo! Thinking about the New York Knicks. Alrighty. Um. You know, the regular season is up. What's that, Birdman? We've got our draft picks in. We've got some, you know, <laughs> high-end uh, free agent acquisitions that are on the team. And, Brian, if you could just throw up that uh, that, that projected. Don't tell Brian to throw up. Lineup. Please don't throw up, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, throw it up on the screen. What's up, baby? The projected starting lineup of the uh, New York Knicks. Yeah. 4-0. Oh. When you look at it, it's like, oh, snap, we got a ball club here. And when was the last time we were able to say something like that with confidence? Listen, we four and zero in the preseason. You know, which um, means nothing. Which but... means nothing. But you... <laughs> thanks, Harry no, G. Wiz. This guy's a downer. Look, look at his face, <laughs> rubbing his forehead and all that. Um, but but listen, man, it, I think it does mean something because when you have um, when you have the coach, we have Thibodeau out there um, playing his starters not starter minutes right into the 30s or whatever else he's not trying to run them down but he's trying to build a culture of winning and the perfect example was that was the fourth game which i didn't watch the rest of but we we're down 15 points what did what did we do did we take everybody out and say hey we're gonna we're gonna throw the rookies out there and and call the day no he kept his starters out there he threw some other people out there like grimes who you know knocked down a couple of three-pointers and they came back and won that game He's trying to build a culture of winning here. The dude is shouting as if it's, you know, the seventh game of the, you know, of the finals, right? Because um, mm-hmm. that's who he is. And he wants to build that consistency. I'm not trying to say that we are um, in the top tier of basketball teams out there, but I think we're going to surprise some people who are predicting us to take a slide backwards with some of the improvements that we've made. Now you've got, you've got Fournier, you know, starting. You've got Walker out there starting, you know, replacing people that couldn't put the ball on the floor and create their own offense, right? So that was the problem in against Atlanta. You know, you have people, you have um, Trey Young um, guarding our small forward, right? And they're hiding him on defense because, you know, th- th- he couldn't put the ball on the floor, <laughs> right? 
stands in the corner. That's all he can really do on offense, and then that was it, yeah. right? So let's throw the ball to Randall, and if Randall can't do anything with four seconds left on the shot clock, then we have no offense. Mm -hmm. um, now right. we're gonna we'll, we'll take a step. Yeah, we'll we'll take a step back on defense, but I'm willing to to do that in order for them not to cheat and double team our best player. Five Rock. on four offensively, it's five on four. Absolutely, uh, five on three, because from the center yeah, position, no, 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 center position, there's no offense. I mean, it, it, who's your offense? You had um Noel, who can't catch a cold, but can play defense. But he can take a shot. He was he was he, he was he could take a shot. Really? He was. I'm <laughs> saying I'm, I'm the, the reality is what he was at times. I'm telling you. Look, let's go back to the videotape. The, I, I watched I watched every game. I was frustrated by those. I mean, he can't even he can't catch an alley oop. He's back right. He is he is <laughs> his hands are not very good. Right. I, I would admit that. But and I think um, Robinson is a step up. Great defense. Oh, absolutely. I mean, him and Robinson are you know uh, are a one and and a two as far as defense. Absolutely, absolutely. But I think I like Robinson better on the offensive side of the ball because at least he can catch the alley oop. Um, I think he's more active in on the offensive rebound side. Absolutely, right. So I think that that improves. Um, still from the five, I'm okay with having a five that's like that when you have your point guard and your shooting guard slash small forward that right. can shoot three pointers mm -hmm. and create their own offense. Right. So and Walker will definitely help with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Can I can I add something to that center conversation? Yep. Um, I don't know how much you guys have watched of Jericho Sims. Um, I, I yeah, have, he looks good. I have, yeah. Rookie. Um, I think that he has potential to be um, a better option than um, Gibson or Noel I don't offensively that. in the same way that uh, Mitch Robinson was, has been, you know, in that, like, close to the basket, alley-oop, offensive rebound um, type of high percentage shooter, but not, you know, an outside shooter, more of a, a, a grinder in the inside, like a, um, uh, what's that guy from Phoenix? Uh, Aiton. Uh, yeah. Wow, you're putting him with Aiton, huh? Yeah, yeah Aiton has yeah, more so of an offensive uh, repertoire. He does now. Yeah. He does now, but um, I know if you had watched the summer league games, and you listen to um, the the uh, the guys talk about. Uh, I think it was Fran Fischilla who was doing a lot of the the summer league games. And mm -hmm. Jericho Sims um, is kind of a, a sleepy good player. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen of him from that like around the basket uh, part of it, he plays really good down low defense, and he plays um, and he has a very good you know put back game. Mm -hmm. So and. and He's if if you throw back up the asset, he's all the way down at the bottom of right. uh, Mitchell Robinson, uh, Ty Gibson, um, Noel, N Noel, Ty, you know thing there. But I, I think that you're going to see some lineups that are going to include him, maybe with a Mitch Robinson at the same time, uh, or mm -hmm. if one of those guys goes down. Um, a Jericho Sims as the center in that second group. Um, I don't see that uh, necessarily. No. Kyle, them playing next to each other. But what I can That's see, very optimistic. I can see Randall playing next to Toppin this year. Where, where oh, I they, didn't. They did a lot of sets of that during yeah, the preseason. Right, which I didn't see that last year. And I think that's probably your best offensive five. If, you know, you got Toppin playing the four and you got Randall playing the five. So if we're down you know, late in the game or whatever by significant points. I can see us kind of going to that that five and um and seeing what it looks like. Toppin looks like a beast this year. And and that's what I wanted to and that's what I wanted to address. In the preseason you saw you saw I'm and I'm talking about when I say preseason, I'm talking about the rookie um You're talking about the Vegas Summer League. The Vegas Summer League when you saw Obi Toppin um taking more shots, um hitting down hitting more shots. Uh, averaging and, twenty points a game. Right. But what I saw was more efficiency, right? I saw more of a of a of a commitment to play defense. Um, I saw him, you know, hitting hitting his threes yeah. from spots, right? So clearly he worked on his shooting. I don't know if he was in the gym with Randall, um, or not. But but he was in the gym. He was he was in somebody's gym. gym. Yeah. He was in the gym, <laughs> um, and quickly just taking you know quicker shots, um, um, uh, and more less ill-advised uh, shots during that time frame. And it, and it has shown. It has shown in the four preseason games 
So I'm looking, and and what I the other the other sleeper is Grimes. I see Grimes getting a lot of minutes. Mm-hmm. I see Grimes subbing out Barrett a lot of minutes, and that's yeah. that's that's not that's going to push Barrett um, because Bar- what Barrett is continuing to do is getting too deep under the basket and trying to take a shot and um, getting blocked. Uh, and what I said last year is that he's got to work on. Um, you know, a step back of some sort because what they're doing is just waiting for him to, to get uh, all the way underneath the basket where the basket becomes another defender. Mm-hmm. And um, that's not going to work in this league. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's definitely looks like he's, he's still uh, improving in, in his three point um, ability mm-hmm. over, over the year before and the year prior to that. Um, this is his third year. So look, um, I, I see good things for the Knicks. Uh, if we can stay healthy, if Walker can play half of the minutes and D Rose can play half of the minutes at point guard and Fournier is not a, uh, a, a defensive um, liability. liability. Yep. And he I, can hit that sweet, Fournier that sweet third. Sweet. He looked good, but I mean, he wasn't on the floor at the end of that game. It, the, the, the people that were on the floor was Obi Toppin, Randall, Barrett, Rose. Grimes too, yeah. right? And, and excuse me. And, and they subbed out Barrett and put Grimes in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when you uh, saw that look, it looked good. It looked good. It looked good. Mm. Grimes shoots. Four, with, Grimes shoots with confidence. Right. Mm. Four, Fournier uh, played very good defense internationally in the Olympics. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> okay. like when they when they went head to head against the USA, <laughs> right. um, he played very well in like you know like being in the starring role. Um, Kind of. Pronounce right. his name better than that. He's French, Kyle. You're like Fournier. Fournier. No, no, it's, uh, Fournier. I'm getting phonetic. Fournier. Fournier. It's like no, Beignet. No, no. It's like right. Beignet, but Fournier. Right. It, 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 it took me. It, it took me like, like four Fournier. years. It took me four years to learn how to say Nilakina. Um, and now I don't get to say. And that now anymore, he's gone. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think. Uh, I, I think that if you look at um, what. Fournier is going to bring as a as a total player, and then I, I just don't. The thing I'm worried about here is that we're getting into this situation again where we got guys on the bench that don't get any minutes and they continue to be on the roster, like Knox, yeah. um, who was a former lottery pick, um, and then and then you got McBride, who I think is, is it could be a tremendous asset. Also, I don't know where he's going to play. Injuries. Uh, so injuries, injuries, right. and, and injuries, a defense injuries or, G, or or G League. You know, he might be he might be a G League guy. Like He'll be on this team, regardless of whether he's going to be G League or he's going to be on the active roster. He's going he's going to be on this team. Jericho Sims is probably going to be in the G League. To be honest, I think that you. Jericho, I think Jericho Sims will play some G League time if nobody gets hurt. But I'm just saying, don't sleep on if he gets his opportunities. He's he's a working man's NBA player. He's a he's a a lunch pail guy, you know, like uh like Oakley was, you know, without the the nineteen footer. But the uh, the the guy's gonna come in there and he's he's gonna scrap, um, and that's what you've seen every time he's been on the court. But with McBride, I mean, he's legit the fourth point guard if you really think about it, because quickly is is. We'll play point guard before him. Mm-hmm. Well, I have um, a question. Yeah, I have a question. Here's the question. Let's just say we make it to the playoffs this year, right? And we we bump into a team like say Atlanta that really knows how to play our best player on the team, which is Randall. With our roster as it's currently made now, who is the next best player that can step up and win us a game Walker. or win us a series? If Randall is being locked yeah. up, Walker. you remember how it was just so hard for Randall to do anything, and that held us back. So with this new uh, uh, roster or this more improved roster, who's that next guy? To like, me, it's Walker. Can step up and take over. Do we have that guy on the New York Knicks right now? It's Kemba Walker, and and if you have a healthy Mitchell Robinson, um, Clint Capella can't do what he did in that series. You know, Mitchell Robinson cancels out Clint Capella, in my opinion. I don't think he cancels him out. Uh, I, I'll, 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 I'll wait until we see it. It's just I guess, a pick and to... roll. It's how it's how it's what what killed us on on our defense is is how they were so good at that pick and roll 
um, with Clint Capella and um, the point guard for uh, and Denver. offensive rebounding too. Yes, with Clint Capella, I I, I just I, I I think that I think you put Mitchell Robinson in that series, and I think it's a little bit different. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Robinson can you know he can hedge, he can come back um, and and get with Clint uh, going up for the alley oop. Um, he can cover um, Trey Young on the perimeter as well. So, I mean, I, I feel confident in that. I See, I, I kind of hesitate. I think D. Rose is our second best player as is currently constructed, right, as our backup point guard. Um, but I think the key to the series will be Kemba's got to keep Trey Young honest on defense, right? Um, Fournier's got to keep the guy who's guarding him honest on the defensive side. Yeah. So, and and if, if that's the case... They can play both sides. It's all about spacing. So I think it's a group. You know, it's not necessarily the, the second highest scoring player. I think it's just keeping spacing available um, because Kemba's got to hit the three and Fournier's got to hit the three. Yeah, but also you got to be able to bring in like a legit 3 and D guy to as like a reinforce. Like, can Grimes be that 3 and D guy? That is gonna Bruce Bowen the, the the crap out of a Trey Young. I don't. You know, I don't like, think. I don't think um, Thibodeau gives a lot of value to just a D and three guy. I think his value in what he believes as a system that works is that everybody's playing defense, active hands. It's a team defense. It's a team team defense issue. It's not a role like you're, you're gonna you're gonna be our three and D guy. I think the the role is everybody's going to play D and everybody's going to hit threes. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. And if you look at this lineup, all four of the guys that are three guys hit threes at a higher percentage and off the dribble. Fournier hits him off the dribble. Walker can hit him off the dribble. Barrett, you know, is more of a spot up. But Randall's off the dribble. He just won the game, the fourth um, preseason game, off the dribble, off, on, on a three, right? Actually, it wasn't a three. It was a it was a it was a long distance two. Um, so he's not. It's I don't think he is the type of coach that you have to have this guy who's going to be a D and three guy. It's going to be you all going to play defense or you all going to sit down. Well, I mean, listen, we yeah. looking back at that at that series against the Hawks, we scored over a hundred points one time, one time, right? And we that was the first game that we lost one hundred seven one hundred five. So it's really the offense at the end of the day. Like we scored. Well, I'm sorry, twice, because we scored 101 when we actually won the second game. Then it was 94, 96, and 89. It's just, you know, we have to be able to score points with this team in order to be able to beat them. And we had a 3 and D guy. Yeah. But it was on the other side of the ball where we lost it, right? It was right. on the offensive side. Right. I also like our pick and roll game a lot better with Mitchell Robinson. And Kemba. As well. And you got Kemba in there. Yeah, but, you, but again, guys, it's going to take Mr. Robinson a little bit of time. He's sure. been out, right? Sure. So you don't look at the first 10 games. What, what you have to look at is the, is, the, is the next 10 games, you know, from game 10 to 20 in terms of them developing that, that chemistry um, with, that, with that pick and roll. And I think it's going to look, it's going to look great. And, I, and he's not going to just run it with Walker. He's going to run it with Barrett. He's going to run it with Fournier. Um, Rose. He's going to run it with Rose. He's going to run it with quickly. So, um, you know, and I love I love Taj Gibson being on this team, being able to be a fifth scorer when necessary uh, when he's on the, on the, on the court. Yeah, I mean, if, if, we're, <laughs> if we're dependent on Taj Gibson to score points, I don't yeah, know. But I, what I'm saying trouble. is that I'm, what I'm saying is that it's not four on five all the time. It's not four on five in terms of on the offensive side of the ball where you have a pick and pop and you know that he's not going to take that 10 foot jumper. He's mm -hmm. got to come into the paint or, you know, or he's going to pass it back off or it's an alley. You there's another option too. You know? I, I'm very high on Jericho Sims. I think that the pick and roll game with Jericho Sims is going to be good too. He's yeah. athletic. He's strong. And, uh, I think that, uh, I think it'll be interesting, but yeah. I do agree I with he's you on guys the team. that I, I, he'll be on, he'll, he'll, he'll be on and off the team with the G league. I think it's, it's a good, um, draft and stash type of, um, investment that, um, you know, you, you put them in, uh, West, you, you bring them up to, to Brian's neck of the woods and you have them play some, some games in the Westchester community uh, stadium. Well, you know what, Westchester, all city, all state, Jericho Sims. Nah, but listen, I mean, uh, <laughs> 
listen, we're, we're going to be seeing a first taste of this come what? October 20th for the first uh, regular season game for the New York Knicks. That's right. And I'm sure we're going to be uh, texting each other like crazy, you know, that night when the Knicks play. So I believe they're playing the Celtics. They, they are. are. They are. Mistaken. There we go. It's a good time. I'm pretty so, sure. I'm pretty garden. sure that. All Boston teams, all of them. So let's go Knicks. How about I'm, that? I'm pretty sure that, that everybody on the Knicks will be showing up for work too. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Guaranteed. So you know what? Not like Brooklyn. With that being said. We're going to move on to our Tweet Me, Peek Me segment. All right, guys and girls, Brian, cue up that music, and I'm going to talk over it. All righty, this is basically the segment where we talk about things that we like versus things that we kind of don't like. All right, we express those and articulate our thoughts to you, our viewing audience. All righty, yeah, that's right. Brian, cue me when the music fades out. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tweet Me, Peek Me, all righty? Like I said before, we talk about what we like versus what we dislike. And I'm reading everyone's nonverbals that's on the screen right now to see who wants to go first. And Kyle popped his head up first. Kyle McKenna, Captain Kyle, what you got for us on the Tweet Me, Peek Me segment? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to jump on, on, on the bandwagon of my friend Glenn Durkis, who I watch the Jet games with pretty frequently out here. We both are, are pretty tweaked by Adam Archuleta as an announcer. Um, <laughs> Adam Archuleta can go uh, kick rocks. He can go pound sand. I don't want him doing any more jet games. Um, and I, 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 I don't appreciate his analysis um, from his, his time as a, I think he was an Arizona Cardinal if a, or a Ram. Did he play for the Rams? Not my, not, TV, right? Not, was not, he, he, he. He was the DB. Yeah. Not, my, not, 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 not my favorite Jets announcer, and uh, he's tweaking me. Right. For DB sure. stands for a lot of things. Yeah. I am. Uh, <laughs> as as I am. Uh, I am very piqued by uh, one of my my favorite draft picks, Elijah Vera Tucker, and I, I, I love the fact that even in you know, we are so hypercritical making judgments that's what the whole show's about making judgments about the jets and and their decisions and how they're playing elijah Vera tucker is going to be a good player on this team for a long time and uh i'm glad to see that he's getting into his rhythm and uh when makai beckman comes back and even you know i'm not 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 downplaying fans role because he's been pretty good too um but uh, I'm, I'm very piqued by abt and his uh, accelerated progress. Quentin Nelson ish. That uh, we can only hope. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Only hope. yes. Mm-hmm. So go ahead, Kerry. Sounds like you wanted to get a piece of that. Why don't you hop in there? Oh well, yeah. Hey, you know what tweaks me is uh, Zach Wilson's short arming. I mean, he's like a crab out here. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Everything is short under the out seat. It's just, it's ridiculous. Like, the, like the dinosaur, the, right? The T-Rex, exactly. it's the T-Rex. Like, <laughs> like throw the ball. Stop aiming the ball. It's just, just, just the basic stuff. Like, he's treating the know, football if, like if, a patty patty. Right. I mean, if you if you make those plays, the, the the complexion of the game is going to be so much different. Um, let your uh, do you know have trust in what in the plays that your offensive coordinator calls for you that work. You know, if you can't throw a, a screen pass that is wide open and is going for a touchdown and you can't get it to the to the running back, then there is a problem, buddy. So in this bye week, I hope that's what you worked on. Um, as far as what's peaking me is it's, it's, it's Bryce Hall. I mean, this guy is 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 playing um, like an all pro right now. And um, I hope it's he continues to trend up. Um, he's clearly a a, a uh, was a a pick of ours that we uh, really wanted to see him succeed after that uh, gruesome um, ankle injury uh, that preceded the draft. And, um, and overall the, uh, the defensive secondary, specifically the cornerbacks have, have done uh, really well. Echoes, Gidry, Michael Carter, the um, second, uh, you know, very pleased. So that's what tweet, that's what peaks me right now. All right. Well, you know, I'm going to hop in there. You know, uh, what peaks me, I'm going to go with the peak first. You know, the Jets' defense overall, and that's because it's better than what I expected. You go from being, you know, um, uh, 2-14 and 14 
to having a rookie coach. Yeah, you know, a great, you know, defensive coordinator and everything. But uh, it's not like we had a whole bunch of great players on our team that kind of came in. You know, um, a lot of the product that we have here uh, is homegrown product that he was able to cultivate. Um, you know, Quinnen, who had a great year last year, but still, I feel like he's still growing now in this system. Franklin Myers playing so well, he was given an extension. Bryce Huff, you know, we didn't see what he's doing this year, last year. You know, um, we're seeing uh, Foley continue to grow. Um, even Shepard is having a halfway decent season. And uh, Rankins, the Rankins is a beast. Out of Arkansas, the rookie, is playing well as, as well. And then you have, you know, uh, uh, Quincy Williams, you know, the Williams brothers just in general playing out of their minds. Um, Mosley being motivated to come in, lose weight after two years off and, and you know, uh, coming in and playing at a high level and uh, with the injuries and everything. And, uh, you know, we're still playing at a level that I didn't expect us to play at. It still needs improvement. But uh, with the team that only has one win, um, you know, you would think that they were playing worse defense than they are. But it's it's I think it's it's better than what I expected. And I feel like that they're ascending and have the ability to uh, kind of at least top out in, uh, you know, the top half of all around defense, at least uh, ranking 16th or a little bit better than that by the time the season's over. Um, now, what's tweaking me is basically the opposite of the defense is the offense. The, the, the offense, I feel like they're not utilizing all of their weapons. Um, the suspect interior of the offensive line, except for AVT, you know, uh, we spoke about how much he's growing now. Um, he's borderline awesome right now at this point. And the subpar offensive play calling by LaFleur. I think, like what Brian was saying, you know, uh, Solomon needs to grab him by the collar bring him to a room, lock the door, and say, listen, let's sort this out right now, all righty? What do you need to be, down on the sideline or up in the booth? Like, what is it? You know, like, create plays for certain players, like Elijah Moore. You know, let's get this running game established. Like, who's going to be the fullback? What kind of plays are you running? What about some more misdirection plays to confuse the defense? You know, let's be a little bit more creative. Let's just not bootleg, you know? Let's just do other things to create some room for the quarterback to succeed and let's create uh, uh, blocking schemes that's going to be easier for the offensive line to execute so that they can block our number one draft pick and allow him to produce. And I have an additional tweak. No. And that additional tweak is John Gruden. I feel like John Gruden played himself, and basically his career in the NFL is done. And uh, that's that. I'll give it away to Brian. All right, so um, listen, I'll start with my, my, my tweak, and that would be the New York Jets running game. You know, that's, that's really my tweak. You need to set your rookie quarterback up for success and the team success as well. When we thought about the Shanahan, Shanahan offense and zone blocking and, you know, the success of the San Francisco running backs, that was going to be the same, and we're going to have that here. We've run for a total of 370 yards um, in five games. And so when, when you look at that, that's the third worst rushing attack in the yeah. league, um, just ahead of the Steelers and the Dolphins. Not good company. And to put it in context, the Browns, I get they're number one. I get it. 938 yards mm. as a team. That's uh, 74 yards a game. Yikes. Yeah, 74 yards a game. That's 3.6 on average per time you rush the ball. And the Browns average 5.4. Right, and they commit to the run as well because again they're getting success in that space. But we have to be able to. When you think of Mark Sanchez and what we were able to do um, to make it to the AFC Championship game and all of those things, and we don't have a roster for that necessarily, but we were able to run the ball. Right, we had a, a balanced attack there, um, ground and pound, all those other things. But we were able to road grade and get yards running the ball and we're not able to so it's going to be tough you're putting a lot of pressure on the right shoulder and right arm of your rookie quarterback regardless of what you're able to do in the passing game um so we, we need to really be able to fix that i think part of that is, is um play calling you don't have to run the ball on first down every single time you know some of that is play action pass and let's try to throw it a nice, reasonable seven yards or whatever else maybe on first down. So that's really my tweak. 
my peak is Wu Tang and American Story. <laughs> <laughs> Peace, God. Peace, God. Oh, all right. Oh, hold on a second. If if we're gonna go there. Oh wait, 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 uh, wait. Can I get through the rest of mine, man? I, I listen to you. I, 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 I you thought, I, thought that was, I thought that was your peak. There, I have a tweak within the, the Wu. Oh, the, the, well, so, oh, well. Oh, let oh, me let on. me get through my peak of the, that, and then you can get the tweak okay. out. Okay. So so okay. listen, man. I, you know, my man put me on to this. I saw it via Facebook. Um, big Wu Tang fan. Have always been. Uh, we yeah. grew up with it, right? This is our era. At the end of the day, I'm yeah. watching the ASR 10 and Sonic. I mean, you know, <laughs> that was my piece of equipment at the end of the day. So there's a lot of stuff. Music is awesome. Acting, um, you know, just just watching them put songs together. It just put me back into the studio at the end Yo, of the B, day. Hold on, hold on. B. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm cleaning out my basement, right? Because we just got it done. Yeah. I found the BMP album, all nine songs. You did, huh? Yo, yes. yo, listen. We, and a bonus track. And the, still, yeah, of course. Oh I have it, B. I have it. Yeah, we, we, listen, man, that, that's something that with we need. With the logo. To, that, with the logo and everything, man. Yes. You know you know that's what I thought of when I was sitting there and you know, watching the story, man. B, you got to watch yes. it, man. You got to watch it. I mean, it's just it puts you right back there. Um, I can't wait to watch the last couple of episodes of season two and kind of right. catch me up to the whole story, man. But that's really peaking me right now, man. Just the, the entire story. Um, you know, it's it's you know, it's nice to to watch Wu Tang. It's just uh, how we grew up in the nineties. That's my favorite hip hop group of all time. I think number two is Tribe. True, my crew with the Sue. <laughs> and, then that, and after that is um is uh, uh EPMD. Uh, uh, EPMD, yeah. <laughs> all right, go ahead, Kyle. What was your tweak on the on the so for, so first of all, I don't I don't know Carrie if, if Carrie ever tried to MC, but I think at, at least three quarters of us. Have tried to MC at some point in not, our lives. Not me. Uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> nope. Okay, so we'll go three out of four. Mm -hmm. um, I but, was just uh, on the hook. That's it. Whatever, yo. Don't 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 own it now. You know what I'm saying? Now nah, nah, he ain't gonna own it. You yeah, well, got in the cipher. You got in the cipher and right. freestyle. Yeah. So right. come on. Um, so the uh, first of all, the difference between Bobby's voice in season one and season two is markedly different and awkward and uncomfortable <laughs> to the to the point of you know like when i watched the first episode of season two i was like what why did he change the voice to this really awkward like kung fu dub thing Funny. where it's like it's gonna be different this time i'm gonna be with my brothers <laughs> and, 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 and it was like i could i could i could live with it in the first season in the second season it's like sometimes i gotta turn away i'm like mommy you don't understand. Yeah. Funny. Wow. I'm going back to New York. We're, it's time for us to come Rock. together. Yeah. With my brothers. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I got a little bit of a tweak with that as well. But um, I think that there's so many Easter eggs. If you guys ever look at the Wu-Tang Twitter that they have that goes on with it, there's so many Easter eggs that you don't see, like, the the discs that that and Sonic uh, takes yep. those, I still like, got uh, mine. Nineties, uh, you know, the MPC took the same type of things too. I had an MPC one thousand, um, and uh, it was pre SD card. So you yeah. have those discs, and every once in a while, um, the Rizzle will go into there. Like when he was like looking to to run away, he went to get some money, and it has like you know, um, yeah. They have it all written on the disc, like what song it is and stuff like that. So it's kind of like just all the Easter eggs in that are, are amazing. And uh, the acting is pretty good, except for that that voice thing. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I love um, I love Ra the, Raekwon and the way that guy plays Raekwon. Yeah. Um, especially like the studio sessions where he goes in there and he meets um, the guy who's making the 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 production stuff. Was it? Um, EPMD was it? Uh, Eric oh, Eric Sherman. Sherman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like that. Just it's just for guys like us, it's an absolute time warp. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. treasure chest. Nostalgia, man. Nostalgia. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I love it. I, you know what? I got to get Hulu now. I you was do. Netflix, but now I got to do Hulu. Yeah. Speaking speaking of uh, nostalgia, I was telling you guys the other day. My son told me that the uh, that they found out who the Zodiac killer was, and I said. I knew who the Zodiac Killer was back in high school. <laughs> um, 
So anybody that's in the know knows what I'm talking about with, yep. uh, with that. We, we love have... you, Cortez. We love you. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Throw him out there. Oh, yeah, to put it out there like that. I ain't saying his last name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. right, Google. That was his nickname, though. He used to, you know, he knew that. And why was and why was his, it was his nickname? Because he looked like the composite sketch. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, I'm about to read this outro uncomfortably. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for watching another episode of the BKBK podcast. We want to be able to keep bringing you the latest news and viewpoints of where sports and the culture collide, and the New York Jets reign supreme. So keep watching. You can find us on Facebook on our BKBK Podcast fan page. Find us on Twitter on at BKBK Podcast, IG at BKBK Podcast, as well as on YouTube. When you go to YouTube, type in BKBK Podcast, hit the like and the subscribe button, show the love, share it all over the place. And if you can't watch us and you just you know have to listen to us, find us on iTunes or whatever. Go to bkbkpodcast.podomatic.com. All right. So that's it. Let's go Jets. Let's go Bald and Bruins. And let's go Team BKBK. That's right. Come on, baby. Baby, baby, come on. Baby, baby, come on. Baby, come on. on. Baby, baby, come on. <laughs>